Let's size up Cyhawk, tail of the tape, time, position by position. With all the early season big matchups that have gone blowout fashion, I would be shocked if this was anything more than a two-score game. I just think that this is going to be a great game once again. Here we go. Iowa, Iowa State. Let's start a quarterback. McNamara versus Becht or the complete quarterback room. Levi, go. Rocco, and I don't think it's that close. Well, again, you're talking about complete. You said or complete room. If we're just talking well, starters. Well, we're not, guy, we're not, let's not play complete room. We're playing one football. By the way, what happened to JJ Cole? Why didn't he play? Uh, Connor Moberly got the snaps over him. Yeah, so well, why didn't JJ Cole play? I guess Connor Connor Moberly is beating him in camp. Interesting. Very interesting. So I've, I've heard a lot of really good things about Connor Moberly. Yeah, but you also heard a lot of good things about sure, JJ sure, Cole sure. last year. Well, in camp, I actually didn't hear as much about JJ Cole as I've heard about Connor Moberly. It doesn't really matter as long. Okay, it, I, I will take yeah. Rocco. Uh, absolutely at the top i would yeah. give him the the, the nod yeah. even though Cade was really good statistically on saturday go ahead one thing that's worth noting about rocco here too is that, and that someone actually i think it was maybe chris williams that brought it up on their two guys podcast the other day that I, I hadn't really thought about it but it makes a lot of sense actually is that in games like this you would take rocco probably over brock purdy because as much as we as much as brock purdy is the all-time cold hero for and i'm cold here just the hero for iowa state football of all time he had that a lot of that Brett Favre where he just sometimes he's gonna he's gonna do a lot of crazy things that are some of them are gonna work and some of them are really not gonna work. And like if you look in 2021, Iowa got in his head and he was terrible, and that's why he got he got benched. Rocco is not that guy. He's not the gunslinger that brought that Brock was. You know, in a game like this, in where it's against a ball hawking defense in a, in a, in a road game in a tough environment, you'd rather have Rocco than even Brock Purdy in this because he's just a very level-headed guy that doesn't make bad, doesn't really just doesn't make a lot of bad decisions. What's this thing, by the way, what's this thing with Iowa state quarterbacks that they need these hard stone rock names, Brock and, and <laughs> well, they all got to name. They got to, they all got to be able to be puns with October, which is when Iowa State's good. Okay. So. <laughs> uh, go ahead, Mark. You want to, well, we up? can uh, move it on to the running back room. Corey, you can start there. The running back room. Yeah, I think you got to evaluate the room, right? You don't just because it's not just a one man show. I would take, I will take Iowa State because I think Iowa State has a much better lead horse right now, but I think it's very close. I think, I think I like Iowa State's top two better than like Iowa's top two. You know, beyond the top, beyond the two, you know, you're looking at like Jalen. I don't know about that. I like the number one ver- much more than the Iowa. I like Iowa's one. number. I like Iowa State's number one quite a bit better. I would argue that. I mean, Hanson was very good on Saturday, and he's a, a, he's a different back than Sama. But I mean, this whether or not you like the number two back is probably just a matter of you're an Iowa fan and I was an Iowa State fan. So it's you know. I think it's, it's probably, very close. It's, it's honestly, it's probably a push beyond Sama and whoever the starter. I think is for Sama. Iowa. I like Sama a lot, so I'll take Iowa State, Mark. Well, the next one seems to be a slam dunk. So we'll include the tight ends into the wide receiver position and go for the incomplete wide We're receiver room. Are these now or what? Levi. <laughs> I mean, even if you throw in the tight ends, I think it's pretty clearly Iowa State's. As far as if you're just talking about pass catching op- options, I don't think it's even close. So wait, wait, wait. We're throwing the two. We're combining the two together. Why are we doing the tight that? ends in the receiver group? Okay, well, then I guess it's Iowa State, but if we split the two apart, then it's clearly Iowa at tight end and clearly Iowa State at wide receiver. So, yeah, I, I think the, the gap between Iowa State and Iowa at receiver is a lot bigger than the gap between Iowa and Iowa State at tight end. Yeah, we'll see. We don't know that. We don't know that. Iowa's receivers looked good Saturday and they get Caleb Brown back this week. What we I know, know is that, that I finally know the rece- the name of one Iowa receiver, and that's Vander Z. <laughs> well, that's your problem. <laughs> <laughs> it's but like you you know at least three iowa state receivers and i know one iowa receiver so uh and but, as o-line uh, i'll take iowa <laughs> yeah up front i would say it's pass protection did look good on saturday but the running game still needs work for sure so I, I, if you were asking me to take one i would probably take iowa's offensive line okay as we go to the defense let's also give an indication of how much you like your winner of the two units <laughs> Like what is what is the gap between the two? Mark's Defensive trying to create controversy. I'll say we're ju- Mark's gerrymandering the hell out of these rankings. <laughs> what the hell's going on here? Uh, so D line, I guess we're we're flipping the script here. D line, yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, I probably take Iowa. I don't know as much about. I mean, I know the yeah own, own... yeah. I, I mean, I think every Iowa State fan is pretty high on I, Iowa State's defensive line. I mean, I was probably got the better individual player like an Aaron Graves, but as a unit, I would probably almost call it a push. 
Okay. I'm not going to argue that because I don't know enough about Iowa State's line, but I do think Graves and why Black were really good Saturday and what Brian Allen Jr. I want, I want to highlight here. Chit, chit, Chevy Yoda over here. Levi got name, name some, some Iowa wide receivers this weekend. <laughs> yeah, that's because I'm going to be looking at the back of their jerseys on the sidelines, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> not gonna... <laughs> i love it i love this stuff all right i'll, I'll be dead and buried before i recognize an iowa wide receiver <laughs> linebacker and by the way i'm not jerry bandering anything i think <laughs> i think it's it, it's valid when let's say iowa's got the best linebackers in the country and iowa sure. state could have exceptional linebackers but they're not going to be better sure. but it would no I, I was more talking about the, the wide receiver tight end on, on a yeah. scale of <laughs> one to ten yeah sure you know you don't want to see i, I want to know if it's ten to three or if it's yeah, and sure. I, I think Nine. I think Iowa linebacker discussion is like ten to one. <laughs> yeah, mean, it's not a one, it, but it's, it's probably a cat- like, it's the it, biggest. It's bigger than it, there's a bigger gap there between than between Iowa State's receivers and Iowa's receivers. Okay, there has to be right now evaluating. I think the it right gap now. is probably the same without Caleb Bacon. I don't know about that. I don't know how you could possibly say that with a bunch well, of well. The, 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 the funny part about losing Caleb Bacon is he was he was basically exclusively an edge rusher last year. So him playing in the middle uh, middle linebacker was a, an experiment that lasted one quarter, not even a full quarter. So it, it's it's kind of interesting. The, the Caleb Bacon thing is kind of a Schrodinger's linebacker thing where you assume that he was going to be a very good middle linebacker in there, but we actually didn't see him there. We know he's a good edge rusher, and that's what we know he's really good at. We didn't really know how he was going to fit in the middle of the defense. I mean, they talk about him being like kind of the the leader of the room and being the guy that you know he's got the heads he's got the he's got the earpiece in and all that, but we really didn't see what Caleb Bacon looks like as a middle linebacker controlling the controlling the defense. So it's kind of one of the like I would say maybe in a situation until he comes back of like a you can't lose what you didn't have type of sure. thing. So that's a, that's a silver line to put on. It sucks that Caleb Bacon's hurt, um, but. The guys that they did, like I said, I thought Cooper Ebel was great last Saturday, and I think he's the he's a rising star in that linebacker room. I think Caleb Brzezina is right behind him. Um, I don't like love playing f- true freshman linebackers at Iowa, but <laughs> but famously, but famously the last one. Do you know who the last one to do it was? No. Mike Rose, and that worked well, out for you him. Better okay. hope that, he was you better hope they have another Mike Rose. And in that game in 2018, that was another really close one that I would just say kind of one lost in a dumb fashion. Mike Rose was an animal that game. You know what? Hair, hair trigger 83 makes a great point in his last comment. He says, I was backup linebackers are probably better than Iowa states. And I, I would hey, agree you can only that. play three at a time. I know, Mike's but I would just say like, <laughs> so, if they go down, you feel pretty yeah, good. About I, I don't think anybody's and... arguing that Iowa's got a, 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 a big advantage at linebacker. Okay. So I, I don't know that it's a lot bigger than Iowa state at receiver, but that's kind of semantics. I'll give it, uh, I'll give Iowa state the nod at safety. And even though I was pretty good at safety, <laughs> I would say it's <laughs> it was Xavier Wamp. And, yeah. Yeah. Well, Quinn Schulte's back for a sixth year and Xavier Wamp was back. So, I mean, I, they're really good. And then if you where does yeah. Sebastian Castro figure in, are we counting him as a linebacker? Are we counting him as a, he, we haven't even brought Sebastian up Sebastian Castro is, is both freeler. They, they, they're, they're a safety, but they're big enough to be linebacker. They just kind of float around and do whatever. And then you've got, I was always got a guy like that. You've got corner that I would say probably is Iowa. Probably a, I would call it a push. Uh, like if you saw like last week, John says Williams, he he did make a couple mistakes, but otherwise actually played a really nice game. And I think Darian Porter is kind of a really slept on corner over there. He he had a very very nice game. And at six four and a former I well former Iowa Sprint champion, he's got the athleticism, the size to contend with any receiver that anybody throws at him. So it's I, I'm and then Miles Purchase is the, is the stalwart in the Iowa State defense. He's been he's played a, a base every game since the middle of the 2021 season. Basically, um, he's he's about as rock solid as it gets. He's not going to blow you away. He's not going to be a day two pick in the NFL or anything like that. But he's a very rock solid corner that you feel good about. But I think Jontez Williams showed quite a bit last week, and I think Darian Porter had a very very slept on game last week too. So I I would personally call it a push. Let's just combine special teams as a whole. Um, I has I guess uh, the kickers and punters all did their job last week for both teams. <laughs> <laughs> when you get two punters, I think that as far as I'm concerned, right that means there. that's an Iowa. That's a win for Iowa State. They've got two punters. Um, but you know, the Iowa State typically doesn't do like a ton in the return game. Um, but th- what they did last week, the few times they did return it, it was good. It seems like they're trying to have more of an emphasis to try to capture some of that extra field position that Iowa has made hay on for a long time. 
um, you know, as far as winning that field position battle, you know, getting a return for 10 yards is big Even on a punt return, getting an extra 10 yards is, is it can be a huge advantage. So, you know, I Hawkeye Howard, that's the dumbest shit I've ever read. Hey, and Hawkeye Howard, Levi believes that you might be suffering from CTE. Maybe, <laughs> but that's better, better at every position yet. They'll win the game by three. Like, I want to make a graphic. I want to hear that. I want to hear Hawkeye Howard make an argument that Iowa's receivers are better than Iowa State's. I want. I want to hear that argument. And watch and just listen to the brain rot. Hey, uh, um, Mark, but, we got to make one of us has to make a graphic, a two part graphic with Levi's picks at every position in my pick. Maybe I'll maybe like I'll do that. They're probably pretty close. I mean, we we agree on some, and there's some that are like close where it's like eh, maybe a slight light slight lean this way but pretty close yeah to running back's the only one that i'm like i still don't know i don't know how to pick that because i picked iowa state but if you go one through four it's iowa but and but then you look at like iowa state doesn't play four running backs in a game so like their fourth running back doesn't matter like because you're not going to see the fourth running back unless some catastrophic cascade of injuries happens but no that's not typically what is what happens Cas- in a football cascade game. no pun intended go ahead mark we are there. We've completed. Unless we want to rate coaches, do we want to rate the coaching staffs against each other? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, right right now the OCs are both very much question marks. I mean, if you're if you, I don't think Taylor Mills is a question mark at this point, frankly. What's I mean, he, pro- he, he? He this is his first game, and and he, by the way, Tim Lester had a better performance than he did. <laughs> did he? Because <laughs> Taylor forty. Taylor Mills are out him on rate stats. On what? On rate? On rate? Like yards per play? Which is like the best way to to rank an offense is yards per play. If, if you're about to if you're start ranking offense on points and total yards here, we, we're on a different planet of conversation here. Total offense. Uh, that's a 1980 listen, stat. A lot of a lot. Well, hey, you talk to a lot of offensive coaches. Even Chuck Long has had made the statement that the best way to evaluate an offense is total offense. Chuck Long has even said this. Chuck total Long it played offense. 200 years ago. The guy is a dinosaur. <laughs> Are you Whatever. telling me that All Chuck right. Long? I am a big the, yards per play Chuck guy. Chuck Long is the ar- is the arbiter of all I'm good things. It's irre- I'm not saying yards per play is irrelevant, but total this offense man, is the best. What I know is the people that know ball have not used total offense in 20 years. <laughs> yeah, nobody's nobody, used, nobody nobody uses, uses total offense. What nobody a stupid uses, nobody statement. That, nobody what a that stupid knows what they're statement. talking about uses total offense. That's a crazy stat to use. That's a that total offense is an insane stat to use. It's all because it it depends on how many possessions there is in a game. It depends on what like how many total plays are you running and, and like how like nothing, it's just like time of possession. Time of possession is a stupid stat. Nothing you say is do. wrong necessarily, Levi. Crazy. I agree with what you're saying, but to say that nobody uses it, if, all you have to do is flip wow. on a pregame show and they've got total offense and total defense. Well, and people still drive right. Ford Pintos, but like doesn't mean it's a good idea. Like just you know. saying, total <laughs> offense is widely the accepted stat. To no, it's not. no, it's yes, not. it is. Yes, it is. Every time we hear about <sighs> Iowa's offense being the worst in the country over the last three years, we see the stat. Of you can total look offense. at it at the rate stats too. You don't have like you. We can don't hear those. Iowa. Those sta- those are not the who, stats that who, people okay, talk about. Question, question: Who are you listening to? Anybody and everybody. No, don't You're, give me that. No, are you listening to like ESPN? Or are you listening to like analytics people? Analytics. Listen, people, there's a place for there's all. There's nobody of these pro stats. football focused there that has looked not, at the total offense stat in five years. There is not a perfect stat. Okay, no, we have to look not. at all of them. There's not. But I will continue on my stance and that's knowing that I was been dead last in the FBS in that stat over the last few years. Sure. I will continue to double down on total offense is the best way to evaluate. I say, okay, cool. Here's, so here's a question for you then per play average is one thing, but it's not, I think it's a I think I think it's widely agreed upon that. It's a better indicator of the total offense. Put it this way. Put it this way. Uh, okay. We'll go great. Here's a great example of it that we're going to use basketball as an example here, because it's the same thing. You remember, by the way, so, guess what? Guess what? What is a what is a third and fifteen drop play do? Okay, third, I rest my my case. Go. What third? What does a third and fifteen drop play do, Levi? Third and fifteen. There are fallacies with what your your argument is here. What does so a third and fifteen drop play? That's do? also a fallacy with total offense. If you if absolutely, it's third, that's right. If there's if, if, there's, if, there's, if, there's, if you have ten possessions, you get twelve yards. Yes, that's a if you failing have, play. Correct. If you have, no eight, if you have 10 there. possessions in a game and you score and you put up 200 yards or you have 20 possessions in a game and you put 400 yards, guess what? Those offenses are equal. 
Yes, they are. They are objectively equal by every at every statistical measure. Okay, so anyways, my example here. So if you remember, it was a 2021, I think, when Virginia won the national title. When Virginia was like at the height of their power with Tony Bennett and all that. They were known for being a wildly slow basketball team. They just they scored like 50 points a game, but they won a whole bunch. But if you look at Ken Palm's ratings, they're in the top five to top 10 for offensive efficiency because they did not run a lot of possessions. In fact, they purposely slowed the game down to limit possessions, but they were so damn efficient in those limited possessions that they won lots of games. And that's why you would rather see a Virginia team that has really low possession, high efficiency basketball games than something like Chicago state that does nothing but Chuck threes. Sure. They, they have a high volume. They score a lot of points again, but they also have so many possessions that they give up 110 points a game and it doesn't matter. So the point here is that total offense is kind of a silly metric because you have to factor in the number of possessions. You have to figure in the style of play. You have to figure factor in a lot of other things when you don't, when you don't adjust for, the other things going on in the game, you lose that you lose the significance of what's going on. Iowa can run, can, can get 200 yards total in a game, but if they only ran 20 plays, they're averaging 10 yards a play. That's a wildly efficient. That's an all time efficient offense. That's like 2017 Kyler or 2018 Kyler Murray, Oklahoma level of efficiency. But if they only ran 20 plays or whatever it was, then it doesn't matter. By the way, and that's but that's how Iowa has always won games. Is that they they slow the clock down? Iowa is just Virginia basketball, but in the football form. Let, let's they remember good something defense, though, that slow moving the, the down. chains, mo- utilizing the four downs that you've been sure. gifted, and moving the chains is part of football. Right, and, and that and may bring back down your yards per play of- average when Iowa State chucks two long balls in thirty six seconds and scores. Sure, but in like Iowa, said, there's no perfect stat. Yeah, there's no exactly. So I'm just right, saying right, but but yards per play is a better way to evaluate the efficiency okay. and effectiveness of an offense than total offense because you have to you have to adjust for how many possessions and plays you're running. You well, have I to. am much more of a believer on the side of the passing offense in particular. Like the the total yardage, yards per game, total passing offense stats are insignificant. It's it's more about your efficiency, your yards per attempt, sure. completion, right. your TD Absolutely. to pick ratio. That's why it's called those total things. offense. That's not what total <laughs> offense measures, though. Total it offense measures, measures how many yards. yards you went forward. Correct. So, and okay, stay, so, so tell, staying so tell, on the field so and moving this. the chains creates so, opportunities to gain more yards. So, so tell me this. Let's say there's I have team A and team B. Both of them put up exactly 400 yards in the same game, same amount of points, everything. One ran 40 plays and one ran 20 plays. Which one's the better offense? Well, nope, I can you don't you. get at you don't get it. You don't get a divide by the number of plays. He's that, running well, total that, offense. Well, let's remember that's that is an unfair. Is it comparison? No, yes. it's not. That's because that's we don't know in total offense. Well, I, I can tell you which team probably controlled time of possession. Also a bad stat. Well, it's again, it's, all it's, these stats work collectively as a family. Sure. And but time if you're, of possession if you're, if you're is not as important as it once was, but it's right. not a completely irrelevant. No, statistic. it's not. It's not it irrelevant. On how you're playing. It depends right. the style of play. That well, you... And we saw last weekend, North Dakota had 12 and a half minutes of possession and cut probably two possessions at least off of Iowa State's offense. So it's not like it doesn't matter. By the way, I, I never once context. said that yards per play is irrelevant or bad. No, but I'm saying if you're, I'm if you're looking at... I'm saying that a lot of people, offensive people who played the game and coached the game, still look at total offense as a big sure. term metric but what look i'm at. looking at like if you look at like if you talk to the like the minds of today's college football not not 2000 college football i'm talking about 2024 college football you're looking at like the great offense like you know rest of soul mike leach and lane kiffin and mike gundy and and uh caitlin DeBoer at alabama you look at those guys they don't look at total offense they look at yards per play they look at completion percentages and things like that they look at rate stats because rate stats project Total offense can't project. You can't project one way or the other with total offense. You can say we gain eight yards a play. Well, if we ran 30 plays, if we ran 40 plays in a game, eight yards per play only gets us to 320 total yards. But if we can speed things up and we can run 50 plays in a game, well, we can do this. And lo and behold, here we are now at the 2000, at the mid 2010s Big 12 offenses that ran lots and lots of tempo because, because Art Bryles figured out that if we can run 90 plays in a game, we can average seven yards of play instead of 10 and we can be just as productive and we because we think that we've got more offensive firepower than the other team. So we're going to run as many plays as we can. And we're OK with with the other team running more plays, but we're going to run more plays because we can outscore them with our more plays. 
And that's why Iowa does the exact opposite because for a long time, Kirk Ferentz said, well, we may not have the t- as much offensive talent as Ohio State or some or Michigan, whoever we're playing. So what we're going to do is we're going to slow the game down. We're going to condense it. We're going to get as few possessions as possible. So that way the, the margins are razor thin and we're going to win on those margins. We're going to win on special teams. We're going to win on turnovers. And that's how Kirk Ferentz has made a lot of his career. That's not to say that Iowa has never blown anybody out. That's obviously not the case. But Iowa prefers to get in down and dirty close games and then win in the little stuff. And that's a perfectly fine way to win. But that's not, but it's a different calculus. It's the same calculus as Baylor in 2014 saying, we're going to run 95 plays a game and we're going to score 100 points. And you're, we're going to be fine with you scoring 60 because we're going to score 80. It's the same calculus. It's just however you choose sure. to approach it based on your personnel. Yeah. And, and, that, and what you and just that, pointed that out math about, is done on yards per play, not on total offense. Sure. And, and what you just pointed out in regards to talent evaluation is if you believe your team to be less talented, obviously the more the talented team gets to play, whether it's a possession in basketball or a snap in football, the more probability that they're going to take over the game. So you want exactly to limit right. the number of possessions. That's exactly right. So like, and Mike and Mike Leach actually was, is kind of the master of this whole thing because his air raid offense was designed to take teams that are less talented and use, use just raw efficiency to just nickel and dime people out of games. Mike Leach was a pioneer in that thing. And now it's like a staple philosophy of the modern college football offense. So, and, and all that stuff is done based on rate stats. So that's why like, it's not that total offense is like a like we should never look at total offense again. But what I'm saying is like if you're if you're looking at how how effective a ball an offense is moving the ball, yards per play is a much better is a much better barometer of that than total offense because you can run a totally different number of plays in a game. And there that changes a, the number. There is a strong correlation between total offense and yards per play because there's not going to be sure. a wildly. Oh, there's not. Yeah, you're not going to like have disparity like disparity between number of plays run. Yeah, there. You know, most teams are going to end up in the sixty. You know, in the fifty to seventy ish range. A lot of games, whatever. Yeah. But like some teams run, like like I said, 2014 Baylor like to run 80, 90 plays a game, and like I was definitely on the bottom end of that, where they prefer to run like forty five to fifty plays a game because they can win on those forty five plays. So that's my point here is though, is that you look at when you look at total offense, there's just so much context missing from total offense that there, you have to do a lot more digging to find out which one's the better offense. And usually that digging winds you leads you to yards per play and yards per attempt and passing and things like that. So it leads you to, to rate stats. So I think it's more productive to just go straight to the rate stats than look at total offense. Now, total offense in, in combination with the rate stats, you can look at, okay, if these two teams have the same rate stats, but one's putting up a lot more total offense, then we can make a, we can make our, well, that's not entirely true, Erica, because I just told you that Iowa State's going to win through dinking and dunking the passing game. And they're going to do it by using that to open up the running game. And they've got lots of receivers. If that doesn't tell you that it's using air raid principles, I don't know what to tell you other than that. You don't know ball. <laughs> um <laughs> But that's my point here. It was a long-winded way. To we love it. Erica here, Levi. By the way, well, Erica's so. been kind of been kind of testy with me today. So well, she's a big Iowa fan. That's good. I, I'm I'm a big Iowa State fan. So <laughs> you are. I just you know just Case jury's out. Not. Jury's out still. Yeah. That's why I look forward to these conversations twice a year, especially this one because it's game week. <laughs> and yes, I will be watching Iowa Iowa State, and my my eyes are on the nation, but. I need to see this game uh, as I typically do. It usually typically wins the the broadcast window for me, regardless of how ugly it turns out to be. Uh, and it will but be. I expect <laughs> a good one. And again, a, a very important one in regards to the national scale, even though Iowa State's path to a playoff is most likely as a Big 12 champion and Iowa from a record standpoint, most likely uh, their path 